Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today, I'll be taking a look at this. The Tusken Raiders six scale figure by Hot Toys from The Mandalorian. Let's see how it turned out. Greetings, please log in. Username All right, first up as always, let's go ahead and talk about the packaging. It's the standardized box that you're going to see across every company that sells Star Wars figures. Uh, Lucasfilm, I don't want to say mandates it, but they like everything to have a uniform presence and this box is no exception. Up to a point, we'll get to that in a second. The standard box has a border of dark gray angled, opening onto a window of black, featuring a photograph of the Tusken Raider six scale figure standing tall and proud, his gaffy stick in hand, or the derby stick, whichever way you want to explain it. Uh, the Star Wars logo is nice and chromed out there. You can see just how it shines when it catches the light just right. The way that Hot Toys breaks free of these packaging mandates is that they feature a cigar band on their figures. It gives them the opportunity to actually showcase the figures a little bit more by adding a couple more photos. In this case, you can see down to the front there, there's a photo of the Tuscan holding his cycler rifle, while over here on the side, you've got a figure of a picture, a figure, a picture of the Tuscan Raider holding the macro binoculars that he scored off of Din Jaren. Those were brand new on Din. God. Anyway, talk in a second about the color palette. There, it's, it's these nice warm tones reminiscent of Tatooine. This is the color palette that's ever present in every single figure from Hot Toys that's from The Mandalorian Season 1. They altered that color palette a little bit for Season 2. Reason for this is that when you have all of your boxes neatly lined up on a shelf, you can identify them from a distance right there. Anything that's this color is going to be Mandalorian figure and or Mandalorian season two figure for that slightly altered look. But it's a, just a nice way to just add a little bit of flair to the collection if you like displaying your boxes. And these are handsome enough that they do, they do warrant displaying on certain occasions, I think, yeah. Anyway, enough talk about the box. We want to see what's on the inside, right? So let's get going. Okay, before we get into the guts of the figure, I just want to give you guys a closer look at the box so you can see better the contrast between the gray and the black from this angle. And just look at the gorgeous coloring on that uh, on that band um, with the cycler rifle in his hands, just looking really menacing there. Uh, but when you take it off, that's where the real treat lies. There's a really slick insert with another great photograph of the Tusken Raider six scale figure. Gadurfy stick, Gaffy stick. That, that's gonna be something that I do. I'm gonna just call it by both names throughout the course of the video. Every single time I bring up the Gadurfy Gaffy stick, I'm just gonna call it that, Gadurfy Gaffy stick. By the way, each of those is accurate. You can use either one and not be accused of being not a Star Wars fan. No one's gonna make you hand over your geek card, I think. Anyway, but uh, yeah, great looking insert. And when we take that off, behold, there it is. Actually, that's not supposed to be like that. <laughs> uh, this is exactly where that tray would be. Obviously, I've gone in here before the video was shot and taken out all the plastic, removed the box tops just, to, just for a better presentation. And just look at everything that this thing comes with. You have two different types of Gaderby Gabby sticks. And you have that, those, that pair of binoculars that, uh, that Din Djarin took from Toro Calican and handed over to the Tuscans in payment for passing. Uh, you've got this sweet, sweet cycler rifle, which is just, I love that. There's just a very strange patina to it. Like you would expect all this area here to be metallic, or I'm sorry, to be, to be wood but it's, it's reading as metallic to me here. I don't know how accurate that is. I, it's, it's very interesting. Regardless, you also have this faux leather strap with a pretty slick pouch on it. Like that, loving that. There's an interesting, is that, is that, I think that's, that looks like, I, I was gonna say it looks like, like copper that has been, um, let's get this up close so you can get a better look at it. But right here, that just looks like, that just reads as like, a patinaed copper to me right there, but I, I don't know if it's just supposed to be green, but it looks really dead sexy. All the different variations in the metallic bits on the side of the cycler rifle are really on point. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to look at in person. Hope it's showing up on camera nearly as well as I'm seeing it here in person because it's, well, lovely. It's quite lovely. Um, other things that we have, we have, oh, this is cool. I didn't even notice this, but there's a black melon 
which they which they drank from in the show that bitter tasting liquid that apparently takes it's a apparently it's an acquired taste that's okay there there are things that i drank the first time that i drank them i didn't like them and uh, then i wound up liking them take whiskey for instance you know but uh yeah that's really cool that's um it's got a great paintwork on it let's check out the underside there i'm gonna try to get it as close to the camera as possible so that you can get a better view yeah awesome all right get derfy stick number one let's see this is the one that looks like it's constructed from a rifle butt because i'm assuming that it was especially the original prop in a new hope now for those of you who are interested in such things Regal, Regal Robot has just produced a line of life-size replicas of, of the Gadurfi stick, of this Gadurfi stick. I'll get to that in a minute. But it's real, I'm pretty sure it's sold out right now, but the photos of it are pretty interesting. And Adam Savage has a really sweet unboxing video of both versions of it. The, the screen accurate version to A New Hope, which has actually a metal. This part here is actually metal. It's very, very cool. And um, also the one from The Mandalorian, which is less weathered and is 100% resin throughout, I believe. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and take a peek at this one. This is the classic. This is the, this is the Gadurfi Gaffy stick that we, we've come to know and love. Uh, the one that was used to attack Luke, that the Tuscan used to attack Luke and A New Hope on Teta and Tatooine. Of course it was Tatooine. Where else are you gonna find Tuscans? Interesting bit, the, the Tuscans are obviously a riff on the Fremen from Dune. So much of Dune was referenced in the Sands of Tatooine on In A New Hope that, from what I understand, when Frank Herbert first saw Star Wars, he was furious. Like even the dead sandworm, quote unquote, which we now know to be a Krig dragon, that 3 po walked by in that scene. <laughs> I don't think they called it a crate dragon at the time. But anyway, you can see that there's some texture going on right here on the grips. Very, very cool. I love the weathering, the metallic look of the um, of the pointy end. <laughs> this pointy end? There's two pointy ends, right? That's, yeah, okay. Uh, but uh, it kind of fades into like a white point there. I'm not sure what that's all about, but it looks cool. And it just gives a little bit more... It doesn't look so uniform in one note across the board. I really do appreciate that. There's more of the textures that we now know to be hand carved by the Tuscans when they're making their gaffy sticks in, in, their, in the gaffy stick making ceremony. Is there a name for that? Like we, we can't just call it the gaffy stick making ceremony. It's got to have some kind of a name. Hmm. Look it up. And then, of course, we've got all this cool stuff resting here in this little tray, which is just an assortment of hands. I'll pull one out just so we can get an idea of the details on it. Looks like, yeah, this is real soft goods. This is the sculpted, the hand is sculpted, but the, the wraps are genuine soft goods. That's a fine little detail, right? Man, nice texture going on in the leather part of the gloves. Very cool. Last but not least, we have another belt, a backup belt, if you will. Look how much that looks like genuine leather. And the brass buttons on it just, just shine. Very cool. Obviously not real brass. It's going to be resin, plastic, something like that that's been painted to, a sim to simulate brass. But as is this buckle, one assumes. I mean, you can't expect to get genuine brass with your six scale figure and still play and still pay a, price, a decent price for this. Which brings up a valid point. How much was this thing? I probably should have checked before I made the video. Okay, it says here that it's 250 bucks right now. It is on Sideshow's website at sideshow.com. Uh, and currently it's on $5 US shipping, which is, a, it's, that's a significant savings. I, I love it when things go on cheap or free shipping at Sideshow. It just, it just makes my, makes my day so much better and makes it, makes me able to afford more things. Yeah. Anyway, I think that that's everything that's included. What's this down here? Oh, those are extra pegs. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing out of the way and set it aside. I want to pull out the Tuscan Raider and get him up close to the cam overhead camera here. Look at those details. Wow. Wow. Two very different fabrics between the inner costume, the, the inner robe, and the, um, and the outer robe. The outer robe is much more linen-like. Might even be linen. It's probably linen. And nice tan 
leather belt with patch pouches right here. Not, and not leather, actually, that's totally going to be pleather. Uh, but there's a bandolier strap here that doesn't appear to have any rounds protruding from it. Maybe that's screen accurate. I don't know. Now, here's the cool thing. This is what they've done. Okay, we've got a, um, we've got these two belts, straps rather, belts, belts, and this belt right here. And you can alternate these and create different looks for your Tuscan figures. So if you buy more than one, they don't have to look identical. You can take either of these two straps off, one assumes. And I don't think that they're side specific. I think that you can swap them out. Well, we'll find out here in a bit. But you can take one of the straps off of this and replace it with this one and have a completely different look. Or you can take one strap off and replace it with nothing and have a, have a third look. I think, let's see, if there's three, we would have like, what, six different configurations that you could go with? Or is it nine? I think it's nine. Especially if you include like no straps, like have a, have a Tuscan with no straps on. Although, what's the fun in that, right? But anyway, getting back to this, let's go ahead and try to get a closer look at the portrait here. Just get it up there as much as I can. And yeah, God, menacing, menacing. Might be my favorite design of a creature from all of Star Wars fandom, for, for Star Wars creatures from the lexicon. Like one, one of my great regrets is selling the Tusken Raider premium format figure by Sideshow. Yeah, that was dumb. I don't even think those things pop up on eBay anymore. Yeah, well, my loss was somebody else's gain, clearly. Uh, let's draw attention here to the robe doesn't quite fall to the floor. I'd heard rumors that this might be a little bit on the short side, and it is, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I, um, yeah, I can still actually do quite a bit with this. Is this wired? It is wired. These two seams on the inside, this, this out, the outer edge isn't obviously because it's frayed, so you're not gonna wire that. But the inner seams right here are wired, so you can create a decent, like, Lawrence of Arabia style windblown look. Man, that's bitching. I like that a lot. These seams right here, about an inch and a half inside of the outer edge of the cloak, will be, you'll be able to pose those and create a little bit of a windblown look. Uh, there's a nice little scarf sort of a thing. I don't even know what the actual name for that is, but there's like a wrap around his neck. Of course, there's his um, breathing apparatus. I know that that's got something to do. I think that has something to do with hydrating. Um, not just, not for drinking, but for like moisturizing the air, or purifying the air. I don't know, yeah, something like that. Look at these details. Every single, it's folded over again and again and again, all the way down. How do they do that at this scale? It's really, really impressive. Here's something I can show you. He's got pants. I'm not sure the Sideshow version had pants. I should bring in the Sideshow version. I will bring in the Sideshow version. We're gonna do that here in a bit. Or we can just go ahead and do it right now. How would that be? Uh, yeah, pulled this up out of the basement. As you can see, there's webbing of some sort on it. Just go ahead and pop this out of the box. Oh. That, friends. That is the web of a brown recluse spider. <laughs> Hope I didn't just bring him upstairs. Google brown recluse spider bite and you'll see why I'm just not happy about that. Now keep in mind before we get any deeper into this other version of the, of the Sideshow figure, the Sideshow Tuscan Raider, that this is a completely different variant. This is from A New Hope. So the looks are gonna be a little bit different. I'm trying to figure out, there we go. You can see that the Sideshow one Rather than the fully sculpted boots that we have here on the Hot Toys Tuscan, we have fully wrapped boots. They went full soft goods all the way up the knee. And the pants are brown. Really interesting looking fabric there. Can get that up there so you can get a better look at it. And, oh, there's one of my hairs. How'd that get there? Really quick, because I don't want to take up too much time with the sideshow figure. I just want this to be about the Hot Toys for a variant. Let's go ahead and put them side by side so that we can get a quick look. Comparable in height. Comparable in height. I did not expect that. I did not expect that. I did expect the head for the Sideshow figure to be slightly larger, and it is. But it legitimately reads. That's a, that's still a standout sculpt, man. That looks very much like the uh, like the Tuscan from A New Hope. Uh, there's a different shape and everything to the Hot Toys helmet, which is yeah. It's it's just a, they're two completely different looks. 
Sideshow's version, for instance, you can see is just much more weathered, especially down there on the lower part of the robes. Uh, dirtied up, if you will. It just, it looks really cool. I like it a lot. So anyway, that's your look at the figure. Let's go ahead and drop it onto the table and get it into a posing session. All right, here's my Tuscan. Looking strong and proud. Now, I'm gonna do the obvious. I, I try not to do the obvious if I can avoid it, but in this case, I really, really wanna get him in that classic gaffy stick over the head, letting out that I promise I'll never do that again, sorry. Anyway, but moving right along, uh, we're gonna need, now see, I'm just gonna show you that this actually comes with two different sets of gripping hands. I'm assuming that's because of the different of the different uh, widths in the in the uh, in the two ends of the gaffy sticks. You've got a narrower grip and you've got a wider grip for the for down here. That's a pretty cool attention to detail that they paid there. So let's go ahead and take advantage of that. Now let's see. I'm going to have the wide end, the business end, if you will, over here on this side. So let's go ahead and go with a narrow gripping. Get Durfee stick. So this hand is going to be the one that I'm going to use for that. The wider gripped gripping hand. I love that there's like a little thread right there. There's like just this little, this little thread right there. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Fun. But I'll go ahead and jack that in there. Boom. Nice and tight. I like that. And just keep him someplace where he actually looks kind of impressive, which is pretty much any, any angle. So let's go ahead and pop this guy off. Yeah, so so I'm guessing the best way to do this would just be to go ahead and get those arms up. Oh, look at that. The sleeves popped out. That's going to require some attention. What I don't want to do, most people are going to be tempted, I think, to just have him just like this, nice and stiff and just like, which is how he was in the show. I think he actually... When he attacked Luke, I think he was actually on his knees over Luke, but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing in his hands. Nice, soft mitts there. Easy peasy, mac and cheesy. I haven't gotten to say that in a while, at least not in a posing video. So let's go ahead and slide that down a little bit and pry those fingers out. Yeah, nice and snug. Try to tuck those back up in there later. I'll wait until I'm finished with the pose because with all the moving around that I'm going to be doing right now, it's very clear to me that um, that this is going to pop out again if I even got it back in there in the first place. So let's go ahead and get a really wide stance on him. Let's check the flexibility, the posability of these boots. Oh, not much. Fully sculpted boot. Fully sculpted boot. That's right. I forgot. I just had it open like two minutes ago. So let's go ahead and rotate that leg. That'll help us get that foot back on the ground. I'm going to shift his hips this way, I think. Yeah, this way. And then tilt that torso to compensate. I'm going to turn the torso a little bit this way because I want him turning his head this way. And we'll get this arm up a little bit. Let's go ahead and jut that head out. See how that looks. Ooh, that's neat. That's fun. A bit of a a bit of a tuck, a crunch in the waist actually makes him look a little bit more menacing. I really like that. So let's go ahead and take full advantage of these wires and try to get a little bit of a windblown element going in here. And I'm gonna have him stepping forward with this foot. Now, this way. Just see how that looks. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, here's a great idea. Let's go ahead and lower that a touch. I kind of want to go underhand grip on this one. Because it will just look so much cooler. But also because if he's standing over an opponent and getting ready to strike downward, he's probably... Look how much I moved that head around so much. I just totally destroyed what little pose that I had. So yeah, he's going to have this back. Let's go ahead and rotate that arm a little bit. And rotate that hand. See how that was just not centered. And there we go. Now this is fun. Let's 
go ahead and get them on the base. I'm gonna start, I wanna finalize it on the base. Because that sand base just, yeah, we'll go ahead and try to get those boots fitted into the, uh, into one of the actual footprints. There we go. Now I'm looking, does that destroy the overall look of the pose? It does not. So let's go ahead and drop him down a bit more of a crouch, leaning that forward just a little bit more to compensate. I'm gonna have him stepping out of that footprint because I do want a little bit more energy moving to the front. And I think that's my, I think that's my pose, everyone. Let's go ahead and slide this up gently, he says as he shoves. Grab this bit and shove it underneath the wraps, working your way around. The real goal here is to just get it in there enough that you don't see the black underbody. And that's all that you really need. Let's see here. I think this can come this way a little bit and flex more there. Did I just drop the fabric down? I did. Okay, take that. The more you flex that arm, the more difficult it's going to be to get the, uh, to get the fabric back underneath the wraps, but ultimately it can be done. And you don't need to do it all the way around. You just need to do it enough so that you can't see it when it's on display. And that, my friends, I think, is my Tuscan Raider pose. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know how you felt about this video, about this pose of the Tuscan Raider. If you have this Tuscan six scale figure and what you're doing with yours, uh, and if you have any thoughts about what you'd like to see me pose up in a future video, let me know that as well, because I've got quite a few things down in boxes waiting to be posed up, and I'm looking forward to making more content. So without further ado, I'm going to call this one a day and get this thing in for a photo session. Until next time, be good to your plastic. Rarely have Hot Toys or any other six scale company that I can think of for that matter provided us with such an opportunity for army building within a single figure and with something as simple as just belts. Seriously, with between the variety of weapons that are brought into this figure as well as those belts, you can create so many different characters and I just really appreciate that. Incidentally, I also figured out another way that you can actually hide those elbow joints uh, if the sleeve tends to ride up. Just use the outer robe. Pull it down a little bit and then wrap it around like I've done here in this image and it'll cover everything up for you. That's all I've got for you today. Um, thanks for watching this video. Let me know what you think in the comments and until next time, be good to your plastic.